Welcome back, everybody, to Weather on the Go, all your weather coverage. We have a series of disturbances that will bring significant severe weather across the northern states going through this upcoming weekend, as well as the extreme heat that continues to prevail across the southern United States, as well as a long-range look ahead at the weather pattern, including your tropical weather forecast, later on in today's video. If you're not a new subscriber to the channel, be sure you press the subscribe button down below so you don't miss out on all these daily weather updates across North America, including Southern Canada, the United States, and the tropics. And it definitely helps me out for you guys to press the thumbs up button, the like button to help share this information with as many people as possible. So I definitely appreciate that as well. So going back to yesterday, a very busy day it was on your Tuesday, August 8th. We had a lot of tornado reports across northeastern Colorado and extreme northwestern Kansas. Is we even had some tornado reports across portions of eastern Massachusetts toward Cape Cod yesterday as well with 13 tornado reports, 95 wind reports, 27 hail reports, and a total of 135 severe weather reports all told for yesterday with a lot of those wind reports down here across southern Georgia and southeastern Alabama as well. So a couple different pockets of severe weather yesterday. And as we move forward through today, here's your overall weather pattern. We have that strong ridge of high pressure down here anchored across south central Texas and northern Mexico. That's going to continue to bring in the extreme heat across those zones, but across the northern periphery, that's where our series of disturbances will be tracking through this week, and as that lifts north, these series of disturbances will also be further to the north and provide areas across the Midwest into the Ohio Valley with more severe weather chances moving ahead through this weekend. So looking here at today's high temperatures focused across Texas, we're back into the 100 degree mark or higher. We're up to 109 here today into Wichita Falls, 109 in Abilene, and 105 in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. But to the north, where those storm complexes are, it's going to be much cooler with the cloud cover, the rainfall, and that rain-cooled air. Temperatures will be down into the 70s and 80s here from Kansas down through Missouri and into the Middle Tennessee Valley. Valley here. Going through Thursday, much of the same. Don't expect much of a cool down for Texas here unless you live in the panhandle. If you consider mid-90s a cool down, that's about all you'll be able to muster in the Amarillo area. 96 on Thursday. But we pop right back up to 100 degrees in Amarillo on Friday, and there we go again. 109 in Wichita Falls, 106 in the Dallas-Fort Worth area there, approaching 100 at 99 there into the Oklahoma City area for high temperatures. And we can even see a couple 100-degree highs into central Kansas as we go into Friday, August 11th as well. As that ridge begins to build a little bit further to the north and expand again towards this upcoming weekend. This will be bringing trouble, and it's soon as today as well, as we have a very potent shortwave trough moving through the United States here into the mid-Missouri Valley, and this is going to be causing some trouble across that region today, and then that'll push east into the mid-Atlantic and the east coast states as we go into tomorrow on Thursday, August 10th. So let's kind of share with you what we're seeing here. We do have a lot of thunderstorm activity moving across portions of central and southern Missouri, down into northern Arkansas, even portions of western Kentucky this morning, already seeing lots of heavy rain and some isolated to scattered severe weather reports coming out of that as well. That's going to pick up as we go through the afternoon and evening. The Storm Prediction Center has a level 3 out of 5 in the orange shaded color here for severe storms, especially in the extreme northeastern Oklahoma. Southern Missouri, Northern Arkansas, and extending as far east as the Nashville region, Middle and Western Tennessee, the Memphis area, Huntsville, Alabama. We're going to continue to watch that. Northern Mississippi, Western Kentucky. That's the biggest area of concern today. And walking you through what these storms could pose with the risks out there, we could be seeing those hurricane force wind gusts here across eastern Oklahoma, through southern Missouri, Northern Arkansas, and getting into Western Tennessee. To see today that could be those wind gusts of 75 miles per hour or greater then we have to look at the severe hail risk as well we also have hatched marks here 
across those very same areas and some of that actually extends into northern Mississippi and northwestern Alabama those are your hailstones of two inches or larger in diameter so hen egg size or larger possibly up to baseball size in some of these areas and we also have a 10% and hatched risk for tornadoes maximized across southern Missouri and far northern Arkansas that's where we could see one of those EF2 or stronger variety tornadoes into that area Area as we go through today. So a heightened tornado threat as we go through the day today is definitely a concern as well. So let's walk you through the timing of when you can expect these big storms to be rumbling through. So this afternoon, we're already seeing that ongoing MCS, that mesoscale convective system, starting to lose its luster a little bit as it pushes to the east, but it's going to lay out a bit of an outflow boundary across southern Missouri and northern Arkansas. And that's going to be the focal point for reinforcement of thunderstorms to develop a little bit stronger and intensify as they drop south through portions of Missouri into northeastern Arkansas going into this evening. This up here into the Ohio Valley is going to be more of just a heavy rainfall threat, not expecting much in the way of severe weather up here into Indiana, Ohio, or northern Kentucky. This will just be bringing a threat for some flash flooding. Then as we go into overnight tonight, we're going to start to see another other MCS developed that with those storms blowing up from southern Missouri into northern Arkansas that's going to push its way further east into the middle and western Tennessee Valley here into central and western Kentucky bringing more of those hurricane force wind gusts damaging hail and even a few embedded tornadoes within this as well as it moves off to the east even overnight tonight so this will be after dark so make sure you stay tuned to the weather forecast today if you live in these areas and have a weather radio handy here definitely helps out charge your devices your iphones your laptops your tablets anything to stay ahead of the weather out there then this all moves to the east as we go into thursday we have a slight risk across the central carolinas on thursday that marginal risk extending back west here into northern georgia alabama and northeastern portions of mississippi another area of concern of at least marginally severe storms will be up here into the upper midwest and the northern plains up toward the eastern Dakotas, Nebraska, Iowa, and southwest Minnesota going into Thursday, and this is going to be a concern as well, but the tornado threat is maximized here up toward the Boston region, Rhode Island, eastern Connecticut, and then getting down into the Carolinas and eastern Georgia on Thursday, watching out for a few spin-up tornadoes here, and then as we go into Friday, the next short wave in the short wave train up here is actually moving into the upper Midwest as that ridge builds further north. These disturbances will be further north, and we're going to have a lot of instability starting to to build up on Friday, August 11th. Look at these values in the red and purples here. That's 3,000, 4,000, even 4,500 joules per kilogram up here into northwestern Missouri on Friday. And as such, we even have moderate shear values with the mid-level jet stream actually oriented on the northern extent of that extreme cape that is starting to build on Friday. So with that combined, the Storm Prediction Center felt it was okay to go ahead and put an in a a slight risk of severe weather from the Milwaukee region, Madison, Wisconsin, down just west of the Chicago Cook County region through Rockford, Illinois, getting down toward Peoria, the Davenport Quad Cities and toward Kirksville, Missouri here with a slight risk. I feel this could be expanding in coverage and intensity as we get a little bit closer as some of those mesoscale details become more realized. And going into Saturday, we have a little break maybe from some of the more intense severe weather. I wouldn't be surprised as we get closer for a marginal risk here on Saturday as that disturbance moves toward the East Coast. And then a new disturbance right on the heels of that one will push off of the Northern Rockies, the Northern Plains, and down across portions of the Midwest with a slight risk introduced on the day five outlook this is for eastern nebraska iowa northern missouri and western illinois for more severe weather as we go into sunday august 13th so a very busy go of it over the next five to seven days and here's the total rainfall accumulation map now through next wednesday on august 16th you can see where the heaviest rainfalls will be laying out across portions of the missouri valley the tennessee valley the ohio river valley and then on up into the northeast 
and kind of zooming in the picture for you to get you an idea of how much rain you can expect. If you live in the Indianapolis region, a good three inches could be on the way for you. A nice little one to two inches of rain into the Illinois Valley back up here into southern Iowa and northern Missouri. And then the heaviest corridor will be from southern portions of Missouri, northern Arkansas into western Tennessee, where we could be seeing one to three with isolated four inch rainfall amounts through that Wednesday time frame. And then the rainfall is going to pick up across the northeast and southeastern Canada, even including Quebec here and portions of Ontario. And that's where we could see another one to three inches up across these areas as well. And that includes Maine, Vermont, New Hampshire, New York State, parts of Pennsylvania there and back into West Virginia as we go through next Wednesday. Looking at the tropical weather update, the National Hurricane Center is not concerned for any new tropical cyclones during the next week or so. And as looking at the satellite imagery shows, we're not really seeing a lot of activity to be concerned about. A lot of these tropical waves moving off of Africa have been falling apart as expected with the wind shear values kind of ripping the systems apart as they push further to the west here toward the Caribbean and even toward the Western Atlantic. So that is some good news, but there are some changes on the horizon. So the EPS ensemble members, this is your European ensemble guidance. And you always look at ensemble guidance when you're looking far out in the weather forecast to get you a general idea of what you can expect through Saturday, August 12th. So through this upcoming weekend, I'm not expecting any tropical waves to be formidable across the North Atlantic. That does change early next week on Tuesday, August 15th, getting into the middle of the month as a robust tropical wave moves off of Africa into the main development region, the MDR, as we go into Tuesday. And then it actually has that system trying to develop a little further with some of the ensemble guidance pushing it into the Western Atlantic, others pushing it closer to the Lesser Antilles by next Friday on August 18th. So this is about 10 or so days away, but there is a sign that there is going to be some more activity building across the tropical Atlantic as we go further, especially with the experts at the Climate Prediction Center forecasting some favorability here across the main development region toward the Western Atlantic or at least the Eastern Caribbean during that August 16th through the 22nd time frame. And that even could take us closer to, towards the United States as we get into that last week in August through August 29th with that pushing toward portions of the Greater Antilles, the Western Atlantic, and who knows, possibly closer to the southeast coast by the end of August with some of that favorable conditions for tropical development. So we'll continue to monitor this through the long range, but otherwise, if you want additional weather forecast updates, including this video, hit the description down below the video. Follow me on X at HWeather420. I do update on that platform very frequently. Otherwise, thank you so much for all the support, all the generosity on the channel. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you're new for daily updates. Press the like button, the thumbs up. It helps to get all this weather information out to as many people as possible. Leave any comments, questions, and concerns below. I'll get to those later on today. And I hope everybody has a great rest of their Wednesday out there.